Hello there, my name is Lucky Moyo, a playground artist, and I would like to share with you a gentle, playful, and magical world that is playground. I think it's the best thing that we've done, to be honest. It was more for her than some of the other things we've done. Um, she just engaged better and, yeah, really enjoyed it. The project builds on a successful pilot which took place in Kent Libraries in 2019, which recognises that our youngest have been the most affected by lockdown. What's really special about Playground is that these babies have been born during this time, so they haven't had any of that opportunity. Um, and to have this new, exciting project that really engages these young minds and is going to have such an impact upon their lives and how they engage with creative activity in their lifetimes and with their families is, is really, really special. So we are really lucky to be delivering this programme through investment from KCC's Reconnect programme, which is all about allowing them to not only reconnect with um, experiences pre-pandemic, but also to have new experiences. Playground takes place in libraries and children's centres across Kent, aiming to ensure access to the highest quality of creative activity for very young children, aged 0 to 24 months. So for me, it's a really, really interesting age range and the, the responses that you can get from very young children, I think, are just not understood and appreciated. It's always something that special connection you will have with a baby. That, it caught me by surprise, actually, at the beginning of how much they there, how much they ready, how much they looking at you. These sessions are experimental. Can we use artistic play? to support a baby's natural early development, to help them express themselves, explore their environment, play together, and encourage their parents or carer to join in with a shared experience too, and continue creative play at home. So we've created sessions that have materials and objects and sounds and movement. They're sort of multi-layers within a session in order for the babies to understand their world better and to give them agency. It's all about the babies as well, isn't yeah. it? Because we've been to loads of groups where it is a bit more about the mums meeting each other and things like that, I think, mm. which is fine, but I'll probably be the only dad there at most of them. So because it's more focused on the baby, I don't feel as left out. There are more libraries than there are theatres and uh, galleries. So it means that through libraries we can get to so many more people in so many different areas. It's on their doorstep. It's definitely connected us to the library. It's really nice to see libraries busy. Libraries aren't just about books. They're saying actually we're a community space and we're, we want to be an art space, which is really exciting. I think it's great to challenge our artists and to for them to um, start to respect those very, very young children and how they can appreciate and engage with the arts. An inspiring international group of mentors support our playground artists and library staff to develop their confidence and skills in working with the very young. This includes Anna Newell, an early years theatre maker from Ireland. Siri Dibik and Nils Christian Postal from Dibik Dance and University of Stavanger, and Star Catchers, a Scotland based arts organisation whose work has inspired the Playground project. Star Catchers have made a huge impact, not just um, in the UK, but internationally. They're, you know, they, they are very well respected and consulted with about this area of work. They're also a model to look to. You, you know, there are not many companies that have been set up that specialise in this work. Part of Star Catchers' sessions focused on interaction schemas. These 12 behaviours are often observable in the way babies interact and play with objects and their environment. Recognising it helps to spot interest in an activity. They'll have a theme, a starting point for sessions. We're always observing how the babies are responding to that activity. With only the objects in the room, we were invited to play, keeping the schema indicators in mind. 
I remember the high energy from it and the enthusiasm and the excitement. But what's been really, really interesting for someone like me since then is that I have had to slow, 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 slow down. It's really that gentle, slow, relaxed, calm, considered um, approach that um, I have really started to appreciate as part of the sessions. I was quite amazed really, like the idea of the silence at the beginning and then everything coming in. I find it really calming. I think it's because we're not speaking and we're, it's very soothing and like gentle mute. It's all very gentle and soft, so it's quite relaxing. We're responsive, as are the parents responsive, to how the babies are reacting to what's been put in front of them. So the most we do is that offer of these are the objects we're giving you today. What are you going to do with it? Because if they see their carer being silly and having fun, that's going to that's going to transfer to home life, that's going to transfer to the sessions. There are definitely general trends that we're noticing as the programme goes on. So the babies themselves seem to definitely take the lead in the playground session. So even when parents may be a little bit more shy or reticent, the, the babies are really fully engaged in the playground experience. Yeah, how do we provoke engagement with the parents and, partic you know, and use the babies, I suppose, as our starting point. I've had lots of parents say that they are starting to take the ideas from playgrounds and use them at home, which is obviously brilliant, it's what we want them to do. Like I'm noticing with having a baby, there's a lot of waste, there's lots of plastics and you get bought lots of things, but actually just using some stuff that maybe you'd throw away, I love the idea of. I think we'll definitely make a shaker, won't we? <laughs> come to something in the community where people are coming up with ideas that I might not have thought of that can kind of we can take those home as well and think think about things a bit more through her like her lens and I think it's because we're used to feeling as though we have to stimulate babies we have to offer them things all the time and I think it's completely reversed that in the minds of the parents she's completely engaged for that time she's completely mesmerized is probably the best way I can describe it it was really important to us that we had artists with very different specialisms working across the programme and they all bring something very different to Playground and they, along with the babies, make it what it is. When I came with my mum last week, but she said it must be research-based because they like they seemed like they knew exactly what they were doing. The artist development is really, really important. In fact, we structured the sessions so that it wasn't just about we deliver a session and then we all go home. That there was time built into each session for reflection and review of the artists, and the parents could stay if they wanted with the children, and the library staff could also participate in those discussions. We have our snapshots where we've noticed something happen and that's what's really exciting for me is how people respond to something and every single session is completely different. In addition to reflections after the sessions, we've also met during half term to develop what playground is and what it's offering to the babies who attend. Our team of playground artists has included fantastic students from the Theatre for Young Audiences Centre at Rose Bruford College. All five joined the autumn phase of the project as seasonal artists, attending the training and artistic development days, and then delivering sessions alongside the professional team. Music has become a thread through all playground sessions, mirroring the mood but also helping to provoke a feeling, using silences as much as sounds to encourage the babies to react. So as you can see, playground is very sensory and that adapts itself very well to working with children with complex needs. We have been able to develop that work 
with the support of students from Rose Bruford College, led by our lead artist Jeremy Harrison. And to support that even more, we've had the brilliant mentoring from Tim and Amanda Webb, who were the, who were the founders of Oily Cart Theatre Company. Yeah, I think it's up to us, as, as artists, but as people too, to try and uh, find ways of opening the doors that may exist between us. So we've been very fortunate to learn so much from our playground babies and that has enabled us and informed our application to become a national portfolio organisation with Arts Council England which has been successful and this will allow us to work with even more children and families across Kent including in children's centres, in special needs settings as well as with our refugee families. It's, it's incredibly impressive that it has, has this uh, status now. That's, I mean that shows how good and important the whole project is, but it also means that the, the whole of Playground has a long way to go now and has the scope and possibility of developing even more, um, which, is, which is wonderful. Having artists come in to deliver Playground sessions is in an art gallery is, is the ideal. I think early on, uh, from our perspective at Save the Children, we did um, recognise how impactful this kind of project could be and how different it was to sessions that are being run here at the moment. Art galleries are wonderful places for babies and children. The acoustics are always great, so they quite often find their voices. And I think to be surrounded by art has got to have some sort of impact on their well-being. Margate is definitely a strategic choice in terms of why Save the Children work here. We've been working here for many years. So we knew that there was a really kind of great buzz about the project locally and we were thinking about how we could help expand that potentially in those spaces, maybe in new spaces. And then we sort of started having conversations with the gallery here about whether this could be one of those spaces, which was really exciting. For the whole time, I smile. My jaw aches at the end of it because it's such a beautiful thing. I really, yeah, I really love it. In addition to artist evaluation, Katie has been tasked with evaluating the entire project, looking at the impact on babies, on the library service, and on the artists. Within the artists themselves, there's a definite change from the beginning of the, the programme. They are starting to find ways to collaborate with each other. So rather than pigeonholing themselves as a, um, a visual artist or um, a poet or a singer, they are starting to think of themselves as kind of multifaceted. It's made me a lot better at improvising. You know, making a new experience every time is like really important for artists and you can't really prepare to the tea because, you know, we're being responsive and anything could happen. It has to be about what the people who are there want to do. Yeah, I have learned quite a lot and it has helped me in, as an artist in my future projects. Yeah. So when I started it, my first initial class was just me like watching and taking in what the artists were actually doing. And then going forward, now it's just like imitating what I see and I feel like it's made me very confident in playing with children as well. To just know that, oh, they would copy because they actually mirror everything you do. I didn't know that working with babies would be as eye-opening as it has been. My practice has become community art. It's about people and how we make art together and why we make art together. So it's really made me think about the offer that I give the community and that there is a lot more creativity for a lot younger that needs to be embedded into what we do. I'm very lucky that we live in Sturry and we do have a library still and it's good to support your local libraries. Plus it's also nice that they are doing other things as well to bring younger kids down and hopefully he will get to learn about books and love books and read books. We try to encourage young, young children or children to take part in our artistic activities across the country, but I've never envisaged it actually going down from naught to two and uh, so it's really exciting for me to see this happening. Playground has a real complementary place in, in our menu of activities and events in libraries, registration archives 
It shows that we're evolving, it shows that we're meeting ever-changing uh, customer need and making a real difference uh, to uh, babies' early development. In terms of my development, it's given me both a deeper understanding of my practice in relation to babies and adults and community, but it's also helped think about how we support artists to grow in that way, to grow alongside the communities that they're working in. For me, I think libraries have the potential to really become the creative and cultural hub in a community. Yeah, it's meaningful. What happens around this mat is meaningful. You're sharing really intimate moments, you know, where the most vulnerable elements of our community are just really <laughs> gently hanging out with us. It's a really privileged place. I'm definitely coming back, but I think I'm going to sacrifice myself and let my husband come to one because he would think this is amazing and it's kind of nice that he could come and then I could come to a different one and yeah, I'll definitely be coming back. To take Playground to an even wider audience, if not global, we will develop Digital Playground. That will include a new, very exciting and innovative website and that website will contain Playground creative activity that parents and families all over the world can access. So in the future, Playground and our funding from the National Portfolio with Arts Council England will enable us to start to create and commission new, innovative, exciting work for babies and children. Alongside that, we will develop and grow an early years creative network across the UK ultimately leading to a brand new international festival for babies and children that will celebrate the creativity of all our children and families in Kent but also alongside the best international work that's been created for babies and children. As part of the festival we will have a summit which will bring together children, families, academics in psychology and in child development alongside those who work in the childcare sector as well as obviously our artists. The ultimate ambition is to raise the profile and bring about much needed change in, in terms of, of the understanding and awareness of this area of work. But ultimately, it's about a baby revolution. <laughs>